All right, 54 below, coming to the stage right now, Aaron David Gleason. Baby, just one more time Don't make me sit all alone and cry Well, it's over I know it, but I can't let go Like a fish out of water A cat in a tree You don't even want to talk to me Well, it's over I know it, but I can't let go She won't take me back when I come around Says she's sorry that she pulls me out I got a big chain around my neck And I'm broken down like a train wreck Well, it's over I know it, but I can't let go I got a candle, it burns so bright See it in my window every night Well, it's over, I know it, but I can't let go You don't want to see me hanging around I said, I feel like I've been shot, didn't fall down Well, it's over, I know it, but I can't let go Help me sing it, help me, I need some help Say, Go take me back when I come around Say she's sorry, then she pulls me out I got a big chain down my neck And I'm broken down like a train wreck It's over I know it, but I can't let go Neil gives us that walk She won't take me back when I come around Says she's sorry, then she pulls me out I got a big chair around my neck And I'm broken down like a train wreck Well, it's over I know it, but I can't let go it's over, I know it, but I can't, I can't Well, it's over And if he can He can Thanks, thanks, thanks. Hope you're having a great night. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Last September 1st, I was having a night. Wasn't a great night. Standing outside, my normal routine. Ah, this is bad. Smoking, yes. Little weed mixed with loose tobacco. Seven months sober off of tobacco, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. But not weed, though. The Green Goblin still has me in his clutches. <laughs> the hippie lettuce, ladies and gentlemen. My mother-in-law, who, before I go on with the show, I just have to say, my mother-in-law is a saint. <laughs> she was over and she was talking with my wife. They were making plans for the next week, plans which would see me go to Los Angeles to spend time with my father. My father's 85, and every chance I get to spend with him, I take it. My mother-in-law and Stacy know that that's healing for me, and they were happy for me that I was going out there. Happy and a bit relieved because that guy standing outside, smoking, the son, the father, the holy ghost of a husband, he was just impossible to be around. Through Trump, the pandemic, maybe teaching a few kids music classes after which I would come home and sleep for two hours. I was just a joy to be around. So outside, smoking, and it starts to rain and I walk out into it because I want to feel something. I haven't felt anything in two years and I want to feel this and I feel, I feel wet. This is what I feel. And this rain, this rain has a name, I know, because it shows up on my phone as an emergency alert. Hurricane Ida, take shelter. Well, our home is in a floodplain. We were so excited to buy our first home that we bought a home at the bottom of two hills. That's us, yeah! 
That's where we want to live. There was no shelter for very long. All of my defenses, all of my hammered down floorboards, nothing could stand this hurricane. I had spent some time under a cloud before. Don't feel sorry for me, but always a personal little cloud. Was that the artist muse? I come from a long line of moody Irishmen and anxious Jews. <laughs> Is this that? If you ask a kid to draw a cloud, it's usually white and fluffy, not mine. On that fateful night, on that biting wind, I swore that it would never be the same again. It is in my blood As your record spins I give the last of the eulogy To myself again is raging. I'm sick of feeling it. The novelty is over. I know we're in a floodplain. I run back inside to check our basement. Yep, open the door, it's a river rapid in the basement. I think I can handle this. I run down there, I'm bailing, I'm bailing. The water's up to here, it's up to there, it's up to there. I can't bail anymore. It's not working. It's hurting my back. I can't protect my family. That hurts. I run back upstairs to check the bag that I packed for dad by the front door. It's floating away. There's water coming in our front door. It's like the shining. It's not bloody, but it looks bad. It's still scary. <laughs> I've been the innkeeper the whole time. And I know at this moment I have to call dad. I have to let him know. I call him up on the phone. Yeah, dad, no, I'm so sorry. You're not gonna believe this. Yes, the flood. I can't come out for your birthday tomorrow. I apologize. 
I'm so sorry. I run upstairs. I close the office door. I'm getting a little bit emotional. I'm looking at a picture of him as I'm talking to the old guy. Yeah, Dad. We'll do it up next month. It'll be like this month is a do-over. Yes, thank you for understanding. Okay. Yes, FaceTime me at dinner tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's breaking my heart. Don't worry, this story ends well. <laughs> Dad, can you hold on a second? Yeah. All right, Mr. Gleason, this is Pleasantville Fire Department. Do you still need us to come bail you out? Ah, oh, yeah, maybe. How high is the water? It's five and a half feet. It's right under the electrical box. That gonna be a problem? Ah, uh, probably won't. Probably won't be a problem. Explode! It probably won't, though. You still want us to come? Yeah, uh, hold on a second. Dad? Yeah, I gotta go. See you next month. Click. I'm filling to the brim with panic. It's something that I do. I specialize in it. Plus, for a week, I've had a loud ringing in my ear. They get it. <laughs> it's tinnitus. It came along with hyperacusis. Those two come together quite often. Hyperacusis is a condition where every sound sounds too loud, painful. I can't play with my son for fear he might scream. That breaks my heart. I can't even do the dishes for fear they might just touch each other. That sound is too loud, painful. I go see every doctor on earth. Mr. Gleason, you don't have any hearing loss. We don't know what it is. Mr. Gleason, you don't have TMJ. We don't know what it is. Mr. Gleason, you have an unusually long neck, but it's not the cause of your tinnitus. We, we, we don't know what it is. My underground anxieties that I had buried my whole life, they were just popping up all over the place. Oh well. Let's not talk about that night. Let's talk about Los Angeles, the 1980s. Melrose, when it was still punk, it's actually a thing. Echo Park, when it had actual hipsters, not Trustafarians masquerading as hipsters. Hipsters with so much vinyl and so much denim and so many horn rim glasses. Buddy Holly's as far as the eye could see. We had restaurants, we had Gorky's, a Soviet themed restaurant. Don't think I'd try that now. Uh, we had Pink's whose hot dogs killed Marlon Brando, Bella. They did. We had Edda Bevix, where the waiters would say, are you gonna eat that, sir? Really? Are you done with that? What's up with the mask? You actually paid for abuse. You can never get away with that these days. You see, I wanna talk to you about Los Angeles. Give me a miracle, I just want out from this. I've done my share of helping with your defense Now I must admit You're killing me Hometown of mine Just got back from the boulevard Can't stop crying The boy at the corner shop Gave me a line and a smile well, I know he was trying But a lie's a lie These days, these days I can't win These days I can't see no vision I'm breaking, losing faith These days, these days These days, these days You know, New York was cold I tried the winter here once Nope. Clearly the greatest city in the world But you know, it's not my home I feel more alone Oh, these days, these days I can't win These days I can't see no vision yeah. I'm breaking loose Sometimes I speed down Crescent Heights 
can hardly feel it running every lie but I'm never faced cause it isn't mine am I just dreaming and every time that I feel I leave this city for the first time Ooh, I wake up on the other side Let me tell you about these, these days. days, these days. Actually, let me tell you about those days. I was an only child being raised by a single parent. And a uh, single male parent was my dad. It's actually, it's still not common. Uh, listen, my parents, though divorced, were cordial about one another to me, for the most part. But uh, I didn't want to be pitied. I wasn't sad. Okay, if you, if you pitied me, it, it reminded me. And it made me sad. Little cloud, this guy right here. Of course, I wish I spent more time with mom. And I wish dad was less stressed. I was growing up with dad, his lip would get stuck on here, and I'd be like, Dad, you're so stressed. Look at your lip. He's like, I'm not stressed. You're stressed. I'm like, Jesus, this was my daily life. <sighs> Stressful Gleason's coming down the street. Like, hi. That explains it. Yeah, that does explain it. But listen, my world was vibrant. It was. I was provided for. And I had friends. I had imaginary friends, which I named when I was 10 years old whole family of them, right? They're here and they're here. I had real friends too. I had Ben, he was my real friend and, okay, Ben moved away when I was 12 and that kind of sucked, but I saw my, my mom's parents almost every day. My grandparents, they were amazing. <laughs> and when I'd see mom in the summer times, that was just a love fest. It was, quite frankly, awesome to hang out with Joanna Gleason in the 1980s. <laughs> Let me just tell you. One summer she was doing, uh, she's so glamorous, like the best sunglasses selection you've ever seen in your life. Still, no, you can't have them. No, she won't tell you where they got them. She was doing a show down the street in the 80s called Social Security. And she would take me every day, every night to see this show. And the stage manager there was a saint. You have no idea how long we worked on that. <laughs> and this saintly man would say, where's my armrest? And I'd go, do, 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 do. I'm your armrest. Eat. And this saintly man would feed me sleeve after sleeve of Pepperidge Farm cookies, Brussels, the best of all the Pepperidge Farm selections. <laughs> Trust me, I felt so sophisticated. And I would stand there as his armrest and I'd watch Social Security and I knew every line of that show better than I know every line of this show <laughs> because I was wired on Brussels. <laughs> I was Brusseled out. My father, he was glamorous too, but he had to be the sergeant, the drill sergeant. He had to get me ready for school, teach me to tie my shoes get my private school uniform ready. Aaron, this is how you do your timetables. Okay, Dad, I get it, I get it. But I wanna take this opportunity to say, as a parent now, I can't believe the amount of grace and patience that he had raising a child by himself, for the most part. I'm home alone with Daniel for two days by myself while my wife is on a company retreat, and when she comes home, I want the Congressional Medal of Honor. <laughs> Look at this. Can you do this? I didn't think so. Mother cannot guide you. One summer, 
mom was in a different show, and she was singing me lullabies oh, from it every know. night. And believe me, even at eight years old, to hear No One Is Alone sung to you as a lullaby, I knew it was poignant. And believe me, I knew what the word poignant meant at eight. I had a huge vocabulary then, useless in grade school, loving it now. <clears throat> New York with mom was the elephant and castle. Sweet relish on hot dogs, carriage rides through Central Park. New York was my world's fair. It took care of Aaron Sito, the indestructible little kid. New York knew what to do with me, but later, <laughs> as I crashed down on its shores at 30 years old with no prospects, New York didn't recognize me anymore, and it let me know. It said, I don't know you, and you don't know you. So I ran off in every direction to find out. off the light post, it drinks from the fountain, it shivers in bed like a beast, but you feel like it's not so bad. In Nueva York, spills all your secrets and makes introductions. I'm speechless but useful I'm grist for the mill and it's killing time In Nueva York In Nueva York I don't give a damn Bound with the York or where I am I did it cause I could I did it In Weber York See I have a weakness It's easily exploited and since I'm anointed, it's holy hell to get me back to earth. In Nueva York, don't feel the difference. Your compass, no interest. It's shattered and broken. Its glass is only good for mosaics. I don't give a damn about where we are or where I am. I did it cause I could. I did it. No, yes, I did it cause I could. Sing it with me now. the outside world, thank you. <laughs> to the outside world, my bicoastal life seemed seamless. We did a good job of that. I did a good job of that. But there were cracks, hairline fissures, uncried tears, rivers of them, and the waters kept rising. Mom came back to LA through my high school years and then left in my mid-20s and I used that excuse or that opportunity to careen 
through my 20s. <laughs> I'm glad you <laughs> see where I'm going. <laughs> a job here, a job there, a record label deal that went south, Mater Ding at LA's number one restaurant, <sighs> performing gigs at a deli at three o'clock in the morning where the rodents delivered pastrami. <laughs> <sighs> I had gone <laughs> underwater and the waters kept rising. If life is a river and you can't step in the same LA river twice, LA felt different to me. Even my imaginary friends had gone, or so I thought. I was torn. Where was home? I'll get right through. It's become clear as day There's nothing left to lose Sometimes I harmonize Oh yeah I never get tired I'm waiting For your direction It's just another way to get found just another way to get around Your tremolo Although they can duplicate it it's not for them to know Sometimes I need your sound The others get drowned I'm waiting for your direction It's just another way to get found It's just another way to get around To whom you speak I wouldn't claim to have answers But I can tell it's real Sometimes I need a little time Softer than a wind chime I'm waiting For your attention It's just another way to get found It's the only way to get around It's the only way to get around It's the only way to get on lead guitar there. He has the most fantastic red hair. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a marvel. In 2008, Mom did a movie with Art Garfunkel, and I'm not sure how many people here are familiar with the Talmud. Actually, I know we have a Talmudic expert in the audience here. Todd Schatz, stand please, take a bow. I'm serious, Todd, stand, take a bow. He's a Talmudic expert. Now, Todd will back me up on this. In the Talmud, it specifically states that mothers 
have to, at some point, give their child's album, I'm trying to get this right, to Art Garfunkel. I don't know how it knew, but it did. And mom, she wants to do right, right? So she gave my album to Art Garfunkel, and I got a letter in the mail from Art Garfunkel, and it was very garfunkel -y. It was in this tiny green ink on graph paper askew, and he had, I'm telling you, this is just the beginning of the story. And he had put time codes, parts in the songs that he liked. In my mind, it read like this. Well, it did read like this, but this was the voice I heard when I was reading it. Aaron, one minute and 10 seconds. Excellent VRP. VRP means vocal risk presence, a metric that he made up, I suppose. <laughs> to be how ballsy on certain syllables you are. I took it as a compliment. I've got excellent VRP. Did you know that, Darnell? No. I'm the best. <laughs> There's another part in the letters. Aaron, two minutes and three seconds. You are James Dean meets Bob Dylan. Whoa! Are you listening to that, critics in the audience? Because just run with it. It's great. Aaron, two minutes and three seconds. You're... Five cents flat. Great. Okay. Well, two out of three ain't bad. So, this letter was falling. Don't laugh at that, Adam. <laughs> Another musical director over there. Uh, that letter was followed up by a phone call. Aaron's Art Garfunkel here. Don't know if you've ever heard of me. Used to be part of a big duo. Uh, I think everybody in the world has heard of you. Oh, anyway. Now I'm just a stoned pop star, and if you'd like to come hang out with a stoned pop star, you know where I live. Click. I didn't know where he lived. <laughs> but I used that opportunity to tell everybody in Los Angeles to kiss my ass. I was gonna go be famous because it's Garfunkel. Just excellent VRP. I'm gonna go meet him. So I found where Garfunkel lived, and I met with him. And uh, in his tiny office at the top of his townhouse, it was like it was hermetically sealed 1977 with him in it. It's a nerve-wracking situation. And to add to the nerve-wracking situation, Garfunkel and I got extravagantly obliterated stoned. Now, 99% of the population becomes jolly whilst high. Not Garfunkel. <laughs> He's in the 1% I call Hannibal Lecter high. Aaron, are you a rock and roll animal? Jesus, um, yes? I don't know. Do you have any apple juice? My mouth is so dry, I don't know. I need a rock and roll animal to run my tour. Is that you? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a tour manager. I'm more of a singer. Oh, can you sound like Marvin? Like Marvin Gaye? No, just ask my band. I clearly don't sound anything like Marvin Gaye. Did you do something? Don't look at him. I'll talk to him later. Anyway, he, he toyed with me like I was a cat toy. Actually, he was very generous and, and very lovely. But after the weed smoke cleared like a Garfunkel genie, he was gone, just poof. And I was left in New York, having burnt the bridge back to LA, staying at my mom and Chris's on the couch, eating bagels from Tal's on Broadway, thinking, what's next? I got an opportunity to audition at Stella Adler School for Acting for their summer, conser uh, summer conservatory. See how good I am? And um, being the child of two acting teachers, astonishingly, osmosis doesn't work this way, but I didn't know shit about acting. Can you tell? I learned a few things. Uh, so the gentleman there, Lou in admissions, said, do you have a monologue? I said, what's that? He said, just tell me a story. So I told him the Garfunkel story. He laughed. 
felt like pity. Maybe it was assistance. And Lewin admission said, take this paperwork to Stacy at the front desk and you better come to every single class. I said, yes, of course, I'm gonna take, give me that paperwork, I'm serious, I'm 30 years old. I mean, it's gotta get serious. I'm not gonna smoke with Garfunkel anymore. I take this paperwork and Stacy Baum at the front desk. Are you seeing this, Lou? The jolt of joy and hope and lack of cynicism in these eyes? So I went to Stella Adler School and I didn't miss one second and absolutely nobody within a hundred mile radius thought I was there to learn to act. Look at the no, darling, it's gone over the sun. Look if you will, darling, you will. Bet you'll be still, I know you will. Leave it to me, you know just where. Past the dawn, baby. Move on now and forever. You may leave in this way. I will not stay. Leave in today. Give me something now. Look in my finally stopped at 3 a.m. as our cars floated away down the street, unsalvageable. 
And Daniel and myself, my mother-in-law, and Stacy, we were picked up and taken to my in-laws where we stayed for the next five months. Now, my in-laws are saints. Still working on it. But there comes a time when adults are thrust into a surprise living situation where the host family are quietly screaming, you don't have to go home, but please, actually you do have to go home, leave. I don't care who you are, if we're blood related, please. No, they didn't say that, they're lovely. But listen, we wanted to go home. Daniel was freaking out. If he'd knocked over a glass of water, it was the flood all over again. And uh, our house needed to be rebuilt from the studs up. Now with my floorboards ripped up, literally and figuratively, my hypochondria raged out of control. I was having panic attacks so often that the people at the emergency room gave me a punch card for a free visit. <laughs> they rolled their eyes at me, which was easy to see with the masks on. Oh, Mr. Gleason, have you, have you found a therapist yet? I'm just saying you might wanna find a therapist because don't take your blood pressure. Actually, you have one of those cuffs, throw it away. I was taking my blood pressure every five minutes. Do you know what makes your blood pressure go up? Taking it. Don't buy one of those things. They tell you that at the emergency room. But I was driving everybody crazy. I wasn't sleeping next to Stacy for a while. So I went to mom's and it quieted the noise in my head. Stacy and Daniel were the keel to my ship, but I couldn't find dry land. So I met a psychologist, Emily, a good one and started connecting the dots. And Stacy and I went to see her together. And to tell you more about that, I'd like to introduce you to the keel to my ship, Stacy Bone Gleason. <laughs> Is somebody watching Daniel tonight? He's fine. He's, he's on his own. He's a modern kid. He's great. He's great. You look lovely. Thanks, Thanks for not divorcing me. Stacy, baby. Yes, Aaron, baby. I was actually thinking about doing the laundry. That would be great. I said I was thinking about it. It would really make my day. But the thought has passed. Look, I can't do Daniel's laundry, your laundry, and my laundry. Your socks are starting to stand up on their own. Where are you going? I should take a nap. Baby. Oh, oh baby. My sweet baby. You're the one. Stacy Bowen Gleason, ladies and gentlemen. She can actually sing.
One thing I learned in therapy is my wife is a mermaid. She can breathe underwater. One more story. Before the first day of that private school, I went to a Montessori hippie kindergarten. And now I was gonna go to an, this kind of private school. And I just wanted to fit in. This was a new thing for me, books. We didn't have that at the Montessori school, so we had books and, and dad had gone out and gotten the, the paper bags and he bespoke them and did all sorts of little designs and there they sat and I learned how to tie my shoes the night before and I had this uncomfortable sweater on and I was ready for private school. So we went upstairs, we went to sleep and the next day, come downstairs and a pipe had burst right over the books and got them all wet and they were warped and they had an odor and they stayed that way for the whole year. Dad tried everything to save them. He put them in the oven, nothing worked. I was the scattered kid with tattered books trying not to be noticed, trying not to be embarrassed, jumping from left brain to right Work, dream, work, dream, 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 just dream. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was watching social media. Ever heard of it? And I kept coming across this one person's page and it was like, ah, quiet, beautiful, a ray of sunshine. It was a vocal coach in New York and his students just leapt out at me. They, they had such freedom. They were singing to something beyond the clouds and it touched me. I couldn't stop checking in with this page every day. This vocal coach, Darnell White. So I reached out to him, I slid into his DMs and I said, can you teach me how to sing that way? And he said, call me. And I called him and he said, I can't teach you to sing that way. I can give you permission to sing that way. I can be your friend and stand next to you and you'll sing that way. I can let you be free and sing that way. And that man and I talked every day for a year before we even met. We used to joke that we were best friends before we even knew each other's faces in person. And when we did finally meet, it was confirmed we had been friends in a past life or something. We just knew each other. And this guy, Darnell White, used to rib me and say, have you ever done a show at 54 Below? One day I'm gonna be your MD and you're gonna go tell your story. I said, that's never gonna happen, that's just a dream. I'd like to thank Darnell White for making that dream come true tonight. I'd like to thank the rest of this band. Bella Mae Mortis right here. Bella lives on my block in Pleasantville. She experienced the flood as well. She's one of the strongest people I know and she's only 16 years old. Irene Blackman here. Irene's amazing. Ian Barnett on drums. Joseph Wallace on bass. Neil Rosenthal, the Red Menace on lead guitar. Timing is everything, right? If mom hadn't have done that movie with Garfunkel and given him my CD, which got me to New York, which got me to Stacy, which got me here, I'd be a man standing under a cloud talking to my imaginary friends. The Bravers, that's what they were called. That's what I named them when I was 10 years old. Here comes the sun Here comes the sun I say It's alright Little darling It's been a long, cold, lonely winter Little darling It feels like years since it's been here here comes the sun Here comes the sun 
comes the sun I say it's all right Little darling the smiles return into the faces Little darling it seems like years since it's been here Here comes the sun Here comes the sun I say it's alright Thank you, 54 Below. Thank you, staff and crew of 54 Below. Thank you, Jennifer Temper, for taking a flyer on me. Let's go party. Holy shit, we did this. All right. She won't take me back when I come around. Say she's sorry, then she pulls me out. I got a big chain around my neck, and I'm broken down. Like a train wreck. Well, it's over, yeah. I know it, but I can't let go. Go down now, what? Go! When I come around, say she's sorry, then she pulls me out. I got a big chain around my neck, broken down, got a tree red. So I know I can't let go. She's gonna take me back when I come around. Say she's sorry, then she pulls me out. I got a big chain around my neck, and I broke down, got a tree red. So I know I can't let go. Go down now, what?
Thank you.